Hi everyone, happy Friday. I hope you're all doing well. I hope that you all had a great week. I had a really nice week this week and I wanted to do a get ready with me with you guys today. And I thought that while I get ready, I'll answer some more questions that you guys asked in my Q and A. And if you don't know what I'm talking about on my community tab, I had posted a request that if you all wanted to see a Q&A video that you would ask me questions and I got lots of questions and I answered some of them in a recent get ready with me that I today I thought I would get ready with you using some products that I'm always super excited to use and I would answer some more of your questions so let's just jump in and get started so I'm gonna start by using a little bit of primer and this is the Smashbox primer. It's been around forever. It's the Photo Finish. And they also have the Photo Finish primer that ha has like other ingredients in it. That's like skincare. This is just a sample that I have. And I'm really glad to have it because a little goes a really long way. I use the tiniest drop and I really just place it in my T-zone and on my eyelids to set my, um, my eyeshadow. So I put a little bit of that on my skin and it's got that slip to it. Like it has like dimethicone in it. And I don't mind that. It leaves my skin feeling really soft and it makes my foundation look better. And so this is what the foundation looks like. It's a little bit runny, a little bit watery as you can see. And I just take my sponge. Um, it applies very well with a sponge or a brush. I've just been using a sponge lately because I got some new Real Technique sponges and I didn't have any nice new sponges for a while and my other ones were grossing me out. You know how after you use them so much they start to just look dirty and gross and then you don't want to use them. And it doesn't oxidize on my skin during the day. The color stays very true. And I was color matched for this and if you're curious what color I wear, I wear F20N. It's a neutral so it's not too yellow and it's not too pink. Um, neutral undertones are best for me, I'm finding out, because whenever I get color matched, they always steer me toward a neutral. The other thing that I really love from Smashbox are their cover shot palettes. And on their website, they carry several of them. In Sephora, I think they only carry four. And I've purchased this one about three times. It's my favorite, and it's the matte palette. And it looks like this. And I love that it has like a pinky um, basic color and then a kind of a yellowy one too. So if you're doing a neutral eye look or if you're doing like a really bright fun eye look or you can even go across the middle section and use them together. I've purchased this palette again and again because I always use up my favorites and my daughter has different favorites in this palette than I do. So after I use my favorites, I give her the palette and she uses it up. I also had the Punked palette, which is like a smoky eye. It has some purple in it. It's so beautiful. And I, I used that one up and I haven't repurchased it and I was going to, but when I was there getting ready to purchase it, I decided to purchase just the cover shop metal petal metal palette and it's like a rose gold palette and it looks like this and so I'm going to use this today because I'm really excited about it I haven't used this one before so we'll see but also I have purchased the Cali contour palette again and again and again over the past five years and I've done so many looks with this ever since I've had my channel ever since this came out actually it might be longer than five years and this is the kelly contour palette and it looks like this and i use it as an entire face palette and i think what i'll do is i'll use this first to show you how i do my eyes too using this because really i'm just going to contour my eyes so it won't matter that i'm then going to go in with a little bit of eyeshadow and i also have it in the deep color um, so let me show you. If you're very fair like I am, this one is perfect. I love that it has like this peachy shade that can you be used as like a blush or it can be used as an eyeshadow or whatever you want to use it for. But then it has this kind of taupey gray bronzer, which is so perfect for very, very fair people. It's the way that contour would naturally look on me because I don't tan or bronze very much. I used to use the Kat Von D Shade and Light 
eyeshadow palette because I had a color like this and it was an eyeshadow, but it was perfect for contouring. And when they discontinued that palette, I was so sad. But then I realized that the Kelly Contour Palette has that shade. And so I'm so happy about that. And then if you want a darker, like more warmer color bronzer, as you can see, very cool, warmer. So you can definitely get a warmer look if you're very fair like I am. And then you just have like this brightening matte shade, which is really great for on your mobile lid or even just using it very lightly on a big fluffy brush and powdering. It reminds me of the of Ethereal from Hourglass, their, their brightening powder, really pretty. It's like a banana powder shade, but lighter. And then you have a highlighter here and it doesn't have any strobe. It's just a really pretty highlighter. And then you have this shade here, which can also be used as like a contour. And I like to use this on my eyes as like part of my eye look. So that's the palette I'm gonna use today. I did use the dark palette in a Get Ready With Me not too long ago, and I did a whole face look using the deep palette. And if you are deeper than me, this is the deep palette. And as you can see, it's very deep. And I like this too, but I have to use a very soft touch. But I, I do like it in the summertime, and that's the only time I can use it when I'm really self-tanning and I wanna really look bronze and summery. So, but if you have an olive skin tone or a deeper skin tone, this is the one that you would want because this one might not show up very well on you. So I'm not gonna really talk about the product anymore while I'm using it. I'm just gonna tap at which one I'm using and where I'm using it. And you can follow along if you have it, or you can just sit back and listen because I'm gonna chat with you answering some of the questions from the Q&A. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the contour, the one that I really like for contouring, and I'm gonna do my contour all over my face, and then I'm gonna go to the next step. So I'm gonna do right beneath my cheekbones, kind of in the back more than in the front. I don't really like my face to look like the more you pull it forward, the more chiseled it's gonna look. And if you're in your 50s like I am, you lose volume in your face and I really want my face to look full. So I don't wanna give the illusion of a thinner, more chiseled face. Okay, so I'm gonna blend all of this better afterwards. So don't despair, I promise I'll get to that. Same shade and now I'm gonna do my nose. And I just contoured my nose along the sides of my nose, which is gonna give the illusion of my nose looking thinner. Okay, the first question is my top three foods. And I wasn't really sure how to answer that because I was kind of like, well, if I was on a desert island and I was starving and somebody rescued me, what are the things I'd wanna eat first? And so I'd want a steak, a really juicy, tender steak. And I'd like a potato of some kind and like probably like a baked potato with butter and sour cream and maybe a side of broccoli and cauliflower and just, just like with a little bit of butter and salt on it. So very simple. I, I don't want anything too crazy. And that's what I would really want. And I think that I would eat that even if I wasn't rescued, but I would skip the potato. And sometimes I indulge and eat a potato, but I try really hard not to eat starchy like white foods because they, the carbs really make me put on weight. So I don't usually have a potato, but sometimes I do, and that's like a treat. If it's a normal day and I'm not on a desert island, I would eat the same meal minus the potato. Would I eat something more? I don't even know what I would eat. Like my husband does grill up steaks for our family and he makes potatoes and vegetables and I do just stick with the vegetables and the steak. So that's like my favorite meal probably. Okay, now I'm gonna bronze a little bit, but I'm gonna buff this a little bit better here. Just kind of blend that in a little bit better. And so now I'm gonna use the bronzer right here and I'm just gonna use this BK Beauty kind of fluffy brush. I would use my big bronzer brush, but it's a little too big for this palette, but this one is just right. And I'm gonna put that like right above where I placed the contour. All right, so if I also, if I could have breakfast and I would eat anything that I would want to have for breakfast and not worry about carbs or anything, I would eat like a Belgian waffle or some crepes filled with fruit. Um, French toast with lots of butter and syrup on it. Oh my gosh, those are such treats. And I love those foods, but I very seldom allow myself to have them anymore for the reason I mentioned before. Um, the carbs add up quickly and 
they make me put on weight. So I don't indulge. What I usually get is scrambled eggs, sausage links, and I get both of them kind of well done because if my eggs have anything runny in them at all, they really gross me out and I can't eat them. So I order them like well done, my scrambled eggs, sausage links, and that's really it. And most restaurants that we go to, because we like to go out for breakfast on the weekends, they'll give you toast, pancakes, or French toast, like with your meal. And so I always say to my husband and kids, what do you want? <laughs> and they'll order what they want. And then they eat those carby things that I absolutely love. So that would be my other meal that I eat like on a really regular basis, because I think that's the question when you asked my three favorite foods, you don't want my fantasy meal. You'd like to know what I really eat. And the other thing that I really like to eat every day at lunchtime is either grain-free cereal. So I go down the healthy food aisle at the grocery store and I get grain-free granola. It's so much better with oats in it, but again, the oats make me gain weight. So I get grain-free and then I get unsweetened vanilla almond milk and I will eat that for like lunch and I'll put blueberry, a few blueberries on it and I really like that a lot or I'll eat cottage cheese, low-fat cottage cheese with walnuts, chopped walnuts and blueberries. I really like to have fruit on my cottage cheese, but the only fruit, I sound like, like a broken record here, that I allow myself to really eat on a regular basis is our berries because they're low glycemic. They you know, they don't, if you eat too many of them, they'll raise your blood sugar. But um, if you don't eat too many of them, then they're good for you. And blueberries and blackberries and raspberries are high in antioxidants and they're really good for you. So that's what I eat for lunch. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of that bronzer and I'm just going to put it up here to make it look like where the sun would hit my face and give me a little bit of a healthy glow. This is such a fun palette in the summertime. The, the light medium is really good all year round. The darker one is awesome in the summertime. I'll link the video where I used that and get ready with me so you can see how the dark, medium dark one looks on very fair skin. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up this. It's called a matte highlighter in the palette. That's what they call it. That's fine. I guess that's what it is. It's like that highlighting, like the ethereal from Hourglass but it's like a fraction of the cost because it's in here and the ethereal powder is expensive on its own. And I just hit like the center of my forehead right here. And as you can see, it's very brightening. And like my chin. It really brightens up my face. And now I'm gonna use this highlighter right here, the one that has a little bit of glow to it. These palettes are a little bit dusty, so I wanted to make sure I tell you that because some people do not like dusty products at all. I think it doesn't have anything to do with the quality, just some products are dustier than others because even really expensive brands sometimes have dusty products. So I put that like right at the top of my cheekbone and I'm gonna place a little on my nose and on my cupid's bow. And then I'm gonna go in with the blush the kind of peachy shade, and this is so pretty. Just the apples of my cheeks, nowhere else. And this is just going right on the apples of my cheeks. I'm not gonna put it like anywhere else on my face. Okay, so now we're gonna use the Smashbox Petal Metal Palette. And like I said, it's a rose gold palette. I love the packaging. It's got a little mirror in here. It's really sleek and small. And you could just put a couple of these together, like two or three of them. The punked palette is really nice. The matte palette and then this one. There's some really pretty ones online too and the Smashbox website. And then just put a rubber band around them, put them in your suitcase and or in your makeup bag and you're good to go. They're very small and sleek. So this does have a mirror and I'm gonna cover it. And like the other palette that I showed you. This also has two shades of basic colors. And one is always 
cooler and one is always warmer. This one has two that are a little bit shimmery, whereas the matte palette, since it's called the matte palette, has matte ones. So this is matte. See how creamy they are? They're very, very high quality. When these first came out like five or six years ago, YouTubers were talking about them all the time. And then they kind of fall off people's radar. So it's kind of nice to talk about things that are really good that you can still get and are definitely worth the money. And then it has like all the other matte shades. And this one does have a couple mattes in it, just two it looks like. So it has this matte and this matte. So this is kind of like um, a pinky, taupey matte. And this one is just like a nice chocolatey brown matte. Then you've got sort of like your rose golds right here, which is what I'm really interested in today. So you have this one and this one. Look at that. That's so pretty, that metallic. And then a pinky one. So really pretty rose gold. If you are like me and very fair skinned and blue eyed, um, rose gold is your color because blue eyes really stand out with rose golds. And then you have your other shimmers over here. And these are like coppery and bronzier. This one's really pretty too. Look at that. Kind of peachy. And then you have this warm shade too. So if you wanted to go really warm, that's what you would use. I think I'm gonna mostly stick to this side of the palette, but I am gonna use this matte shade. So I'm just gonna pick up that kind of pinky, taupey matte. And again, a little bit dusty, nothing crazy. And I'm just gonna build this up in my crease. So, um, I think that's pretty much like my eating habits. They're really kind of boring. I love food and I love to eat but I have always watched my weight. And I know one day when I'm old and gray and on my deathbed, I'll wish that I just ate everything I wanted to eat. I do like to have dessert though. I love dessert. I love lemon meringue pie. I love chocolate chip cookies. I like um, so many desserts. I definitely have a sweet tooth. Okay, so the next question is, um, you wanted to know a little bit about my family growing up. Do I have any siblings and all that? So while I do my eyes, I'll do the same thing, kind of point to what I'm doing, and I'll tell you about that. So I did put that taupey, pinky, peachy shade into the crease. It's a really pretty, creamy matte. So pretty. It looks satiny. Even though it's a matte, it looks satiny. And now I'm going to go in with this shade right here. And I'm gonna put it like on the inner corner. So when I was growing up, my dad, for like my first 10 years of life, he was a butcher. He managed a butcher shop. And he would always bring home really good cuts of meat for us. And we had meat every night for dinner. I am definitely a meat eater. I've always eaten meat. I've tried in the past for various reasons to go like more plant-based, but I always go back to eating meat. Um, and I think that it keeps me healthy. It keeps like my, my iron and, you know, I feel like I'm healthy. And so I don't really want to change that. I do eat a lot of beef. I eat chicken. I eat fish. That's mainly it. I do like Polish sausage and sauerkraut a lot. I was raised kind of eating foods like that, but sauerkraut is super good for you. So I, I try to eat that. And so my dad was a butcher for like the first 10 years of life. I have one sister and she's two years older than me. And um, yeah, I just have one sibling. Um, my husband is the youngest of 12 and he has nine sisters. Oh, I went into this really pretty shade, the rosy gold shade. And I'm just putting that all over like the outer part of my mobile lid. I put the light shade inside and this is like the rest. So, so I have one sister, um, when my dad has always like had a hobby of working on cars and doing body work and things like that when I was younger. So we had a blizzard in 1979 in Chicago and it was really bad. It was a really 
big blizzard. And some of you from the Chicagoland area probably remember it. But during that blizzard, my dad had one tow truck and he went to like the officials in Chicago and said that he was interested in plowing the streets, that he would work day and night and plow the streets of Chicago and that he had like a fleet and they could, they could just work day and night and plow the streets. And so um, during that time, my dad did body work on cars and worked on cars in our garage. So we had a lot of people coming into our driveway, going into the garage, which was detached. And my dad would work on cars and things like that. The officials in Chicago told him that, yes, they would hire him on. And so my dad was like, okay, well, now what do I do? I only have one tow truck and just me. So he leased six tow trucks and he got his brother and his friends to drive them and they were like a team and he was gone so much. I remember my mom would sleep on the couch while my dad was gone at night because, you know, she didn't want to sleep in her bed without him. And it was just us, you know, it was my sister, my, me, my mom. And that, that winter he was gone all the time and he worked so hard, but he made so much money doing it that he was able to then lease his own building, which he eventually purchased to go into the automotive industry and work on cars and do body work. And he was very, very talented and he knew how to do it. So he, he stopped being a butcher and he started becoming a mechanic and auto body worker. And over the years, he's just kind of built his business. He's like 79 years old now and he was supposed to retire. We were like, retire, retire, sell your business, move out by where I live so we're close. And then when my parents got older and sick, I could help take care of them or even just like meet my mom at the grocery store and do our grocery shopping together. I mean, how fun is that? Just to hang out together and see them more often. And so throughout my kids' childhood, I was always pushing for that. And they kept saying that they were going to do that. Well, a couple of years ago, my dad got sick. He has prostate cancer. Um... Now I'm gonna take this brown shade. Oh, that's really pretty actually. I'm just gonna put the teeniest bit in the outer corner to smoke out. Um, so my dad got prostate cancer and he let it go for a while because he doesn't like to go see doctors. And so he just kind of ignored symptoms and he ended up getting a blood clot that caused him to have a mini stroke and he got pretty sick. So that was a couple of years ago, like two winters ago. And that winter, he was in the hospital for two and a half months. And I spent like going back and forth, visiting him, visiting my mom, finding out what's going on because every day it was something different. And then he went to rehab because he had the stroke. So he had to go through like physical therapy and rehab. And then um, he finally went home. That winter, I'm taking that same brown color on this slanted brush. And this is also... Um, a MAC brush. It's a slanted MAC brush, really pointy on one end. And I like this because I can do like a little wing like that. It stamps it on perfectly. Even those little things that I get, those little plastic wedges that they give you to do a perfect wing, this works much better. So anyways, my dad, um, now he has to retire. His workers are running his business for him and his business is for sale. So we're just waiting for it to sell. But that winter was such a hard winter. And that's the winter that my dog died. And um, my 15-year-old dog. And COVID had just ended. And my son was leaving for college. And I just had a whole bunch of changes in my life. And they were not good changes or things that I expected to happen. I expected things to look differently. And I think that when the dust all settled on that, I had like a little PTSD. Because I found myself now processing what all happened. Um, one of my daughters was having a hard time at college and I was really there for her. She was struggling at the time. That's resolved, she's all better now. But it just seemed like there were so many things pulling me in so many different directions. And like I said, when the dust settled, then I was kind of like, okay, I have to process all this because I was in survival mode. And I think that's what made me get depressed and anxious. You know how I had that really bad depressive episode recently. I'll talk to you guys more about that um, in another video because I'm feeling much, much better. And so I wanna talk to you guys about that. 
Let's curl the old lashes. I'm not gonna use any eyeliner on the top. I usually use a little liquid liner, but since I did the like reverse underneath, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I really like the way this looks. Let's look at it without any mascara or anything else. So this is just the rose, I wanna call it a rose gold palette, petal metal palette, and the Kelly Contour palette in light medium, and this is how everything looks. Now I'm going to put on some mascara and I'm going to use the Thrive Liquid Lash Extension Mascara, my favorite tubing mascara. I can work out in this. I could sweat in it. I could get caught in a rainstorm. I could cry and it's not going to smear or budge or anything. So I love this. I really wanted to pick up the Tarte tubing mascara during the Sephora sale, but I didn't because I have several tubing mascaras I really like in my collection and I just decided not to pick it up but I heard that one's really good let me know if you've tried it I noticed that they have a regular one and now they have like a volumizing one from Tarte this mascara is so good okay so my dad did that and he was able to get his own business he's like so hard working really hard for him to retire, even though we all wanted him to, my mom wanted him to, I wanted him to, everyone did, and he waited too long and then he got sick. So this is his retirement now. He's still using a wheelchair. Um, we're trying to get him to the point that he could use a walker and then maybe a cane, but it's been a year, so I'm not really sure if that's gonna happen or not. Um, just hard, you know, it's hard to watch your parents age and get sick. You know, it's like you don't think about that when you're raising your kids. They're getting older and older all the time. But you kind of forget that your parents are too. And so are you. You know, we're all getting older and changing. But it's not something you really think about. What a difference a little eyeliner mascara makes, right? Um, so now my eyes are completely finished. Now I'm going to use the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And I think mine is in the shade Mont Blanc. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that right here. And I'm going to take my Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush. I love this concealer brush. It's like just perfect. The size of it and the angle and the density of the bristles. I was just telling one of my subscriber friends that I really like this concealer brush a lot. Like if you're gonna buy one brush from BK Beauty, get the Angie, Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush. I mean, the brushes are all pretty good, but the Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush is my favorite concealer brush. Okay, my son came in here to talk to me and I stopped filming while he was talking to me and I re I thought I restarted it and I didn't. And so I put on my lipstick and I'll show you what I did. The only thing that I did is I put on this lipstick from BK Beauty and it's called Self Love and it's just such a pretty pink. It's the only thing I have. I don't even have lip liner on. And this is what it looks like. Just a really nice pink. It's very creamy, cushiony, and soft on my lips. And then I took some Jaclyn lip oil. And this is in Rose Drip. And I just took the applicator and touched the center of my bottom lip. And went like that. So I have very little of this on over this. So that's what I've got on. And this is the finished look. Let me bring you in close. And I really love this makeup together. I love the Kelly Contour Palette alone when I'm in a hurry. And I've purchased it again and again and again. I wanted to answer one more question. And it was, how has my approach to applying makeup changed? And so I started wearing nice makeup. I wore makeup when I was a teenager, just drugstore brands. But then when I got in college, I started to notice some girls used Clinique. And so I would save my money and purchase Clinique makeup. And I really did that all the way through like my mid twenties. And then I had more money because I was working then I made my own money and I started using Lancome and I would get that at the department store because we didn't have Ulta and Sephora back in the nineties, like the early nineties. So then, um, I've always used, as an adult, I've always used a more natural approach to my makeup. When I was a teenager, I wore way too much makeup. But 
what has changed is that I've always loved products and trying new things and new colors and just always loved that. But I didn't have the skill. So I took a few classes at MAC, like makeup application classes, and I started to get really interested in makeup and trying other brands. And then Sephora and Ulta came onto my radar. And then I started watching a lot of makeup artists on YouTube. And I started to just, I kind of went down a rabbit hole. I would look for people with eyes similar in shape to mine, how they do their eyes, people with eyes the same color as mine and how they do their makeup. And I just started really zoning in on what the directions are in palettes. Like if they come with directions, I started really paying attention to this and just watching a lot of videos and learning. So I say I am a makeup artist for my own face. <laughs> but if anybody else wants me to do their makeup, I'm not a makeup artist for their face. So um, my skill is just for this face. And as this face changes, my application techniques change too. So thank you for spending some time with me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this video format where I answer questions from my Q&A while I do get ready with me's because sometimes when I do get ready with me's, you're just kind of talking about the makeup as you're applying it. And that's good too if it's a new product, but sometimes like these are older products for the most part, except for the foundation. Um, so it can get a little boring to watch sometimes. So I thought that's a way to kind of spice up the get ready with me's is by doing Q and A's while I apply my makeup. So let me know how you like that. And I hope that you have a blessed and beautiful weekend and I'll see you soon.